Hello, this is a demo of a continuous version of a discrete uh, reinforcement learning game I had previously made. I've decided to park this project for now, so I'm making this video so that others can see what it's about and possibly pick it up themselves. Being continuous had many interesting new mechanics, so for example, different speeds for different objects, rotation, and you can have very very long objects compared to the player, for example. Uh, I had to choose for this project uh, a game engine, uh, and after many researches, I ended up going for Uro 3D. If I end up picking this up afterwards, I might just go directly with SDL and Box 2D, because I had to expose many new APIs that were not available, uh, and also there are many things which are more focused for human games, and I'm more interested just in machine playable games. First, there is a simple tutorial level, which just shows you the commands. The next level, the agent must learn that apples are good. So, on the bottom right, you can see a score. Uh, the agent will try to maximize the score. Uh, the ma major agent input is a raycast, very simple raycast vision. So, this is not represented on the screen, but there are rays coming out of the agent's head and when they touch something, the agent knows what it touched. So, did it touch an apple, did it touch a wall, or something else. For the next scenario, we, the agent will learn that there's a new type of apple, a golden apple, which gives five points at once. So, a intelligent agent will try to go to those apples first. Next, we learn that there are rotten apples as well, which reduce the score by one. Those are brown rotten apples. The next a scenario is a bit more interesting. So, there are still golden apples, but there is a wall of rotten apples. So, the agent has learned that the rotten apples are bad, but the agent can see, hey, there's a golden apple on the other side. So, he must force himself to cross at this potential barrier in order to reach the higher uh, benefits of the golden apple, which is worth five points. Next, in this scenario, uh, the agent cannot directly see the apple because there's a wall in front of it. Therefore, this will force the agent to have notion of uh, creativity and explore things and go around the wall to reach it. This is a similar one, but with a different topology. And this one, we are trying to uh, put the agent into new situations and to break the AI if the AI is too naive. So, this is the whole goal of this project. Every time we add a new mechanic and try to break existing AI. In this case, for example, the agent can see the apple, but the hole is too small to go through. Therefore, if it's just if you just make a very dumb agent that just goes straight to apples, it will just get stuck forever. This one, the agent must learn that there's a door and that it opens and closes, and so gives a notion of time to the to the problem. Here we try, there's a button. The agent should learn that when you touch the button, an apple appears. Touching it again does not do anything, and if you eat the apple, okay, now you can touch the button again. Uh, this goes towards our philosophy in this game, that we're trying to mix uh, spatial and logical elements to the game. So the button is a magic logical element. When you touch the button, something happens, and we want agents to be able to learn any type of uh, causa causality between uh, apparently unrelated actions, which is more or less what to do in the real world. Uh, now there are two buttons, and the agent must learn that he must touch both buttons at to, op to get an apple. Uh, on this one, the agent will learn that uh, the, the door doesn't open by itself, and the button, only when you touch the button, will the door open. Here we introduce a new uh, mechanic, which is a rock, so you can just push it around. It doesn't do much, except uh, get in the way for now. Uh, and here we introduce spikes, so when the agent touches the spike, it loses uh, one point. Now time for a bouncer. Uh, the bouncer gives the agent some impulse. So in this case, for example, the agent could use the bouncer to get faster to the apple, if he wants to. Uh, furthermore, the bouncer also pushes rocks around. This will become more important later on. Have a look. Yeah. 
So for this scenario, we have a rock and we have a trash can. And we hope the agent will learn that if he puts a rock in the trash can, aha, an apple appears. So it would be like training a, training a, a cleaning robot. Also, here you can see why we created the bouncers in the first place. It's because if the rock reaches the wall, there's no way to pull it out. The agent can only push. So if he pushes it to a bouncer, boom, it comes out and then he can actually push it to the trash can without getting stuck. On this scenario, we introduce the notion of multiple players. Uh, this can have very interesting new mechanics. Uh, this is just the simplest one possible, and there's just two players competing for the apple. We currently only show the score for one of the players, but both have a score. So as you can see, uh, when this one eats the apple, it's not increasing the score, but when the other does, it, it increases. Here, the players are learning a new notion, it's that of collaboration. In this scenario, when either player touches the apple, both get a point. Here, it, it's a mixture between collaboration and competition. So, if you touch the button alone, nothing happens. But, if both touch the button at the same time, then the apple appears. Then, maybe, naive agents will just try to run to the apple as fast as possible and eat it. But we could think of more interesting prisoner dilemma-like problems where they actually have to collaborate intelligently to get the maximum reward. And finally, obviously, we need a soccer, baseball kind of game. So in this game, when the agent pushes the, the rock on the good side, he gets a point. And when he gets scored upon, he loses a point. So that's it. Thank you for watching.